Hello, uh, Mr. Luke here. Welcome back to another geography video. Uh, today we're going to look at longshore drift. Um, so hopefully by the end of it you'll be able to understand the process of longshore drift, what it is, and then we can start to think of how it might impact on coastlines within the UK itself. Right, first thing I want you to do, there's four questions on the board, or four definitions. Um, I want you to see if you can remember them. Um, have a go, pause the video, take about five minutes. Try not to look back at your notes, but if you are struggling, then please do so. And we'll go through the answers in a few minutes. Right, in terms of deposition, deposition is the dropping off of materials by waves. Uh, swash is the movement of water up the beach as a wave breaks. Uh, backwash is the movement of water down the beach due to gravity after a wave breaks. And transportation is the movement of sediment by the water. So hopefully we remember them um, from previous lessons. If not, look back at the old videos, uh, probably lesson one, two, and three, um, and you'll be able to refresh your memory on that. Right, uh, what is longshore drift? Longshore drift basically is the transportation of material along a beach in the swash and backwash of a wave. And you're all sat there thinking, well, that would just be normal. Um, well, it's slightly different, and we'll go through why it's slightly different in a few minutes. So just, again, the re recap on there. Uh, the swash is the movement up the beach. The backwash is the movement back down the beach. Um, right, longshore drift. It's difficult to get your head around, but once you do get it, you'll understand why it happens. So if we imagine we're on this diagram here, and my cursor is piece of sediment, piece of rock, pebble, something like that. And it starts off at this arrow here. Because of the wind direction, which is the red arrow, the prevailing wind, um, the swash up the beach is in this sort of direction, so at about 1, 2 o'clock uh, on a clock face. So the swash takes the pebble up the beach that way. Now when we get to B, this is where gravity comes into it. So gravity just pulls the wave straight back down or the material, the sediment, the pebble, whatever it might be, is being pulled back into the sea. Again, the red arrow, still the wind direction, still the same way, pushes that sediment along the beach, again, at about a two o'clock angle on this specific um, example to where we get to D. And then the gravity, again, pulls the material back into the sea. The wind then pushes it along the beach again in the swash of the wave and then the backwash again because it's gravity pulls the pebble or the sediment back into the sea. So although it's quite a complex diagram, all that the letters are is just that same pebble that we said started off over in this direction. So the wind and the swash force it to go on an angle, gravity pulls it straight back down. Wind and the swash again on the angle, gravity pulls it straight back down. And then one final time on this diagram, the wind and the swash forces that sediment along that beach and then gravity pulls it straight back down. So hopefully that's somewhat simple to understand, but by the end of the lesson or the video, you'll be able to understand it fully anyway. Right, having just gone through it once, and I know I went through it really quickly, I want you to put these um cards or these boxes in order so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to copy them all out and label them uh, one to eight in order of the steps again if you need to go back and watch uh, this part of the video where i explained it please do so it's probably going to take you about eight or nine minutes to get all these in and get them in order and then come back and press play on the video Right, once you've done that, we'll go through the quick answers. So number one, uh, waves follow the direction of prevailing wind. Number two, the direction of the waves hitting the coastline is dependent of the wind. So that prevailing wind that we talked about in that diagram uh, was about one or two o'clock. Sometimes it can be slightly different. Um, the waves usually hit the coast at an oblique angle. The swash carries material up the beach. The backwash then carries the material down the beach at 90 degree angles. Uh, again, we said it's gravity, which will be the next one, I imagine. Yep. Uh, number six, this is due to gravity. Number seven, material is transported along coasts by the process called longshore drift. Over time, material zigzags along the coast. Right. You've already done the orange box. You've already sorted those cards into order. Now what you're going to do is draw this diagram into your book. It's the same one that we've just gone through already or on your paper. Just draw it in. Um, it shouldn't take you that long to draw it in. 
The third bit, or the second bit for us, because we've already done the first, is to add the annotations onto your diagram. So all those numbers that you've just written out, instead of writing them all again, you can just put the number next to where you think that step would be. It's probably going to take you about 10 minutes, maybe a little bit longer. Um, pause the video again and then come back once you've done it. Right, last little thing we're going to do. Like I said, it's going to be a short video, um, but there's things for you to do is a little bit of an exam question. So in an exam, you might be given a question on longshore drift, and it could be something like this. So some beaches are formed by longshore drift. With the aid of a diagram, explain how longshore drift works. And this one is six marks. It sometimes could be four. It sometimes could be uh, three, something like that. Um, so keywords that you should use, you should mention longshore drift. You should mention gravity, swash and backwash, prevailing wind, direction of movement, sediment and transported or transport so those should be in your answer if they're used in your answer and they're used well there's no reason why you can't get six out of six on this so pause it time yourself i would give myself about six minutes because that's what you're going to have an exam um, with it being one of our first exam questions maybe take eight um, but like i said pause it give it a go see if you can include all of those keywords Right, uh, now you're going to do your own marking. So it's important when we look at a mark scheme that we appreciate that the person who's marking is given this and they have to mark your answer based on what they can see here and what you've done in your work. So there's three different levels, level one, two, and three, obviously. Uh, level one gives you one to two mark, level two gives you three and four, and level three gives you five and six. Basically, the more detail you put in, the higher level you're going to get, so the more marks you're going to get. So if we look at level three, because that's where I want us all to be, uh, you've got a well-labeled diagram, swash and backwash are used on there. The arrows are correctly placed. So remember, we've got the prevailing wind at an angle. We've got gravity bringing the sediment straight back down. So that's important. Um, the account is detailed on oblique angle of the waves, possibly linked to wind direction. So again, you've mentioned something about prevailing wind causing the sediment to be pushed up the beach at an angle. Um, you might have mentioned the zigzag of material and um, yeah, the direct uh, travels directly down the beach due to the gravity. So all those things that we've already mentioned, which I went through, if you've mentioned some of those, um, you're likely to get a level three. The less detail you give, the less marks you're going to get. So a basic one, your diagram's not very good. You've not really used any of the key terms that we went through. Um, but I'm imagining a lot of us are at the high end level two, so four marks or five or six. So into level three as well. Right, that's everything for today. Uh, if you do struggle with any of that, go back over it, watch the video again. Uh, there's loads of videos out there on Longshore Drift that can explain it. Um, you can see it in action, um, and hopefully when we get back, uh, we can go over it again if you are still struggling.